Hi sixth graders, we are beginning our new unit which is rates and ratios. So in the new spot in your notebook, make sure you label on the very top rates and ratios unit and then you'll just want to write lesson 6-1 which is ratios. You don't need to write the learning target but it's being able to write ratios in simplest form and determining whether two ratios are equivalent. So if we look at these pictures of um, different ways to describe ratios, we can, we can find some relationships and we can see what some of them have in common. So if we look at diamonds and hearts, we can see that we have three diamonds and five hearts. Then I'm going to write a semicolon here because this tells us that for every three diamonds, we have five hearts. We actually have eight shapes total but I am expressing part of the group is diamonds and part of the group is hearts. So we would write it three semicolon five, three to five. Three red tiles to four blue tiles. I would write it just like it's written above, three to four, red and blue. For every three, there's four blue. Five girls to 15 boys, we would write it as 5 to 15. And so we say 5 to 15. So again, this is telling us that for every 5 girls, there's 15 boys. There's actually 20 students that we're talking about. Oops, 20 students. So it's not, so if we wrote, we can also write it as a fraction. We can say 5 to 15. It's not saying that out of 15 kids, there's five girls. It's actually saying there's five girls, 15 boys, and out of 20 students, there's five girls, 15 boys. So a little bit different since we've been talking about fractions. We have to change our thinking just a little bit. A vocabulary word that you need to write down is ratio, and it's a comparison of two quantities by division. So girls and boys, two different quantities, and we are comparing them by dividing. Girls, boys. Here we have diamonds and hearts, red tiles, blue tiles. So two different quantities. And then here's a few ways that we can write it. So I wrote it with the semicolon. We can also write it three to four. So using the word two, we can also write it as a fraction, just like I wrote it up here. And then this is how we would write it using algebra or variables. Same way, but we just substitute our numbers for variables. So we can write ratios as um, part to part, part to whole, or whole to part. So I can take part of a group and compare it to another part of a group. Take part of a group and compare it to the whole group or the whole group and compare it to part of the group. So we're going to be doing some examples where you'll see these different types of situations. You don't need to write this down, but when we set up a ratio, we need to ask ourselves a few questions. We need to know what are we comparing. So if we think of the girls and the boys, then the two numbers that I'm comparing are 5 and 15, or number of girls versus number of boys. We write the numbers that are being compared, usually as a fraction, and also we write it as in as simplest form. And then the first item is the numerator, and the second item is the denominator. So if we go back to our girls and boys, notice that I put 5 on the top, which is the numerator, and then 15 on the bottom, which is my denominator. And then over here, Ratios greater than 1 are expressed as improper fractions and not as mixed numbers. So we have to remember that even though we're used to changing improper fractions to mixed numbers, we keep them as a fraction and keep it improper. And then we always write, it, write the fraction in simplest form. So Janine has a bag with three video ca cassettes, four marbles, seven books, and one orange. What is the ratio of books to marbles? So books is going to be my numerator. Marbles is going to be my denominator because it's in 
improper fraction. I just leave it like this and it can't be simplified. The ratio of video cassettes to marbles. Video cassettes is first on the top as my numerator. Marbles are my denominator. Three fourths and I cannot simplify that so then I'm done. The ratio of video cassettes to the total number of items in the bag. So video cassettes is three. The total number of items. Three plus four is seven. Plus seven is 14. Plus one is 15. So that tells me that three items are video cassettes and there's 15 total number of items in the bag. So notice that this time I'm comparing video cassettes to the total number. So this time I'm including the video cassettes in the denominator. Here I have video cassettes to marbles and the video cassettes are not included in here. So here I can say three out of 15 are video cassettes. Here I would say there's three video cassettes to four marbles in the bag. Yes, confusing, I know. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So then if I simplify it, I can also say there's one video cassette for every 5 items in the bag. Another example, um, if so we have some data from a field trip. If you want to pause me and try to answer these questions on your own and then come back and check your answers, that would be great. So the number of adults to students would be 24 to 180. I'm going to write it like this because that's how it's written out at first. And then I'm going to rewrite it as a fraction. And I know that I can um, simplify. I know that they can both be divided by 2 off the top of my head. So 12 and 180 would be 90. And then I know again that they can be divided by 2. So I have 6 45ths. And then... I know that they can be divided by 3, so 6 divided by 3 is 2, 45 divided by 3 is 15. So this tells me that there are 2 adults for every 15 students. Students to buses, so notice that I put my first quantity on the top, I'm going to make it into a fraction right away, and then buses on the bottom. So then I ask myself, can, I, can 180, or can, first of all, can I simplify it? And I ask myself, can 180 be divided by 4? So instead of writing it, because I know that 180 divided by 4 is 45, instead of writing it just as 45, we're going to write it like this, 45 over 1. So we're actually going to leave it as a fraction. So this tells me that there's 45 students for every one bus. And then buses to people. So we have four buses. And we have 180 plus 24. So we have 200 four people. So I know that I can divide everything by four and I get, so four divided by four is one, 204 divided by four is 51. So this tells me that for every bus, there's 51 people on it. 45 students on every bus and then six adults per bus. We can figure that out by using the data that we just came up with. All right, so sometimes we are given quantities that are measuring the same um, units, I guess. So here we have, it's 
we have two quantities that are both measuring time, but they're different units. So first we need to convert them to the same units because it makes sense that we would just write this as 30 to 5. But, but we need to convert minutes to seconds because we can't really convert. It's kind of hard for us to convert seconds to minutes. We could say one half of a minute, but it's easier for us to just convert this to seconds. So I know that there's 60 seconds in a minute. So if I go 60 times 5, I know that there's 300 seconds in 5 minutes. So we're going to now talk about 30 seconds to 300 seconds. And this is basically if you were comparing two different um, things that you're possibly doing. One, that it, it takes you 30 seconds to do um, something some way, and then 300 seconds to do the same thing a different way. You could think of it like that. So then if we have 30 over 300... I know that they can both be divided by 10, so I'm going to do that first. 3 over 30 dividing by 10, it's easy to just drop that last 0. And now I know that they can both be divided by 3, so then I end up with 1, one to 10 is, how it, is what I would say. So for every second that it takes me to do whatever it's talking about here, it's going to take me 10 seconds to do whatever it's talking about there. And then eight ounces to two pounds, we have to do the same thing. We need to convert this to ounces. I know that there's 16 ounces in a pound. 16 times two is 32. So I'm gonna rewrite this as 32 ounces. So now I have eight ounces to 32 ounces. Eight divided by eight is one. 32 divided by eight is four. So for every ounce, um, whatever we're talking about here, then it would be to four ounces, whatever we're talking about for our second quantity. And then if we want to determine if two ratios are equivalent, 250 miles in four hours and 500 miles in eight hours. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these two as different ratios, so 250 over 4, and then 500 over 8. So I know that I can do, I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I have 250 divided by 2, which is 125 miles in 2 hours. And then I'm going to divide everything by 4 so that I can get 2 on the bottom. So 500 divided by 4 is 125 in 2 hours. So now I can see that these are the same. If I, I, I need to somehow get them to the same denominator so it's easier for me to compare. And I can see that they're, they get to the exact same um, fraction, so they are equivalent. Two cups flour to eight cups sugar, so two to eight, and then eight to 14, eight cups flour to 14 cups sugar. So if I simplify this, two divided by two is one, eight divided by two is four, and then Eight divided by, wait, we can divide both by two, so we have four and 14 divided by two is seven. This cannot be simplified more. This cannot be simplified more. So being that they are not the same, they are not equivalent. I'm going to have you pause me really fast and read this problem and determine if they're equivalent and then check back and see if you are correct. So if Derek Jeter had 32 hits 90 out of 93 times at bat, and the other guy, Jorge Posada, had 11 out of 31, I'm gonna, I know that 31 
can go into 93 if I multiply it times 3 and then if I multiply that times 3 so I would get 33 90 thirds and I have 32 over 93 here so that means again that they are not equivalent. Alright, remember you can go back and rewatch. Remember to bring your math notebook every day to class with you and remember to log into NICU and take the lesson 6-1 ratios NICU quiz. Have a good night.